And we're live. Sports Buffet number 15 coming at you live and in the flizzesh. Um This is the closest I have to the Chiefs. So I wanted to show a little love to Kansas City because if I was a betting man, before the game started, I literally thought to myself, I said, Kansas City is going to win this game. And it was like, no, it was a no brainer in my mind. Um, Patriots have just been like hot and cold. I mean, like they've got a really good record. Brady's obviously Brady. Um, They're the Patriots. The defense is phenomenal. But it just doesn't feel the same with the Patriots. Uh, they've got like kicking issues. They can't find the right kicker who misses a lot of stuff and it gets blocked. And I just felt like the uh, Chiefs were going to roll in there and they put a stat up on the TV when the game started that they were like have 21 consecutive home. Imagine having a team that every time you went to their home game practically, they won. Yeah, that's like, insane. I can't. I literally, I can't, like, it's close being a Yankees fan because when you go to a game, you sort of, you have an expectation that they're going to win. Right. And literally Boston fans, and particularly the Celtics, they're probably great at home. I don't know their their record offhand. Um, But for 21 straight games, they haven't lost at home, which is just absurd, which means, like, you know you're going to have a good time. You know you could bring a client to the game. And it's going to be fun. Like, you're not going to leave and just be like, fuck, man, that just ruined my day. Like, everyone who leaves that stadium for however many seasons in a row 21 straight games is, has left with a smiling face. Unless you're an opposing fan, but you know you're going there, you know, ready to take some shit. But every Patriot fan that goes to a game for the last 21 straight games has left with a fucking smile on their face. And that's just absurd to me. Uh, yeah. Like, isn't that like <laughs> saying being, that out loud is absurd. I, it's like being a Jets fan. It's just, you know, you're going to leave with an L. Uh, yeah. You know, it's the exact opposite. <laughs> it so really it's, is. it's so depressing. I can't even put it into words. It's just like, all right, whatever. Good. You know, I will say, I think like the Patriots have one more run in them. They, they, this season or they got like... a touch. Yeah. This season. Uh huh. Um, they got a, they had a touchdown taken away from them oh, during they? that game. Yeah, so <laughs> it, there there were some bad bad calls that didn't go the Patriots way usually do. Yeah, I wouldn't so. be surprised if um, the refs had a little bit of fix in there to you know get the Chiefs a win. Um, Bills lost, so like the, the hurt doesn't it, the loss doesn't hurt the Patriots in any way. Um, I will say this, and I will go out on a limb. There were articles that said the Patriots have no interest in re-signing Antonio Brown. I really think they're going to re-sign Antonio Brown. I think they're going to amend whatever the hell happened. I mean, there was some bad stuff. Antonio Brown left the team and then started calling out um, Robert Kraft and then saying stuff about Bill Belichick. But, like, it's been a couple weeks and maybe months now, and, like, time heals everything. So they start to real like they have they don't really have a lot of weapons on offense outside of uh, Edelman, and that's like really it. Like no other receivers, they're all rookies. Yeah, I thought Sanu would. Oh yeah, Sanu better. too. But dude, he's getting like a catcher to a game. That's it, it's right? Not, yeah, he's that hasn't really worked out that they probably had hoped for either. Yeah. So it's just, but you never know. A guy like him though could kind of explode next week if he gets you know gets used to the system and what they're running and everything. Yeah, that's true. I mean, they were showing uh, Tony Romo was doing some spotlight before the game, and it was just like when Gronk was there, there was a lot less attention on Edelman. So, um, you know, he was making more catches, but now they're doubling him. So, it, you know, he's having a tougher time catching the ball. It To me, if I'm a GM, it, it's just like you have, like, you have a freaking – no brainer guy who guarantee will help you like like biting like at the chomps or whatever they're saying is to come back and play you know just put your differences aside and sign the guy if you're the patriots because it's almost just like a you can't have that many morals because i'm sure there's other guys on the team that have you know beaten their wives or done something pretty horrific um so like i i would think give antonio brown another chance because it's just it's just a quick fix. It's like taking some steroids, but it's legal. 
Yeah, I don't think, dude. I don't. I don't know if I see it with him. No. He's, no, I think it's. Do a you see it with any team? When, not this year. No. No. Okay. No. Not this year. I, I just think it's like, man, it, it, you could do things off the field, like you said. You know, you could have your issues or whatever, but. Yeah. If you're going to disturb the people in that organization, the top people, there's not a place for you on that team. Not now, not this year, not right in this moment. Maybe next year. But, the, you know, it. the NFL is crazy, though, where – and NBA sometimes does this, too, I guess. But they all kind of, like, band together and mm-hmm. decide together, like, no, we're not going to sign Kaepernick. No, no to Antonio Brown. No, no to Jamal Crawford. Yeah, yeah. It's just like it's very strange. It's like they all band together and just like I like I feel like what once one executive says something about one of these guys, and it gets relayed over to a bunch of other people and other organizations. Yep. I think it's just kind of almost like you know, it's like rotten milk. It's not, yeah. not now. Y- yeah, I mean. If there are there there are outlier teams and the Patriots are one of them, you know the Cowboys are one of them, and they can just sign whoever they want. And to your point, I mean, like the Patriots already took that chance, and this guy, who you know had the opportunity to play with the Patriots, you know, like shoots himself in the foot by you know dissing the owner and saying all this stuff about them. So you're right; it's almost just like we gave you that chance. We saw we saw how it could get a little ugly. Um, who who's to say what's going to happen the next time we bring you in and we like what if we don't win a super bowl and you're on the roster like does he come out with a tell all book talking about like tom brady and all of this weird stuff that he does and all these special patriot secrets does he expose them all for them because he knows he's not going to be there the next season so you're right i think they probably weighed a lot more than what i'm thinking about um but I feel like a lot of other teams could be desperate too. Like, look at the sea, like the Seahawks. They're getting smacked tonight. If uh, at, yeah, every team, man, every a lot, team, a lot of teams that like, they could just be desperate and they sign Antonio Brown. But going back like to the, the Cowboys, yeah, the Cowboys actually that's a good point too. And they seem like a team that would just sign anyone, you know. So if like teams like that, if they're passing. That's a good Might point. I don't even the think the Cowboys are in the race. They've got Dak, who's a good co- uh, quarterback. And they need a receiver. They need a receiver. And yeah. even Jerry Jones is passing on them. Um, but to go back to the Patriots' original point, I- I'm fascinated that you know t- for 21 straight seasons, their fans get to go and have a great time, have a great experience, um, and not feel what a loss feels like. Because like you said, on the flip side of it, the Jets, they won today on a game-winning field goal. But even our wins – even our wins, when we're supposed to be happy, Jets fans, we leave the stadium and then we're like, should we even won that game? Like, I would have almost preferred if he missed that field goal, you know? <laughs> At this point, yeah. I mean, you take what you can get. But, like, no, it's – I will never know what that's like, what, what you're talking about. Most teams won't know what that's like, too. Like, we're, you know, that's the – it's that's insane it what is. they're doing, yeah. you know, at home. That's, that's unbelievable. But – I do think that they got something in them. You know what I mean? I think there's something there. I think it just doesn't new... feel the same, man. I mean, like Nick Folk, I think he's actually a former jet kicker. Yeah. He, um, he like they can't get their kicking situation down. Like even when they're not riding good, you, you still look at them and like it just seems like everything's falling. Like I've never watched a Patriots game before and seen them have a block kick seen every week a different uh, kicker coming in there and they just have like being uncertain there. Um, I don't know. Maybe you're right. I just, I just think it feels different. I feel like they can get upset in the playoffs. Like it could be like a first round upset um, by whoever, like say they play, could they play the bills in the first round or something like that? I don't mm. know if they do like that type of stuff. Cause they're in the same conference. I'm not sure. They might, I think they might, but we'll say they, you know, cause that's my bold prediction though. Is just, Playoffs, Patriots first round, they're going to get upset by whoever they play. And it's going to be one of those ugly ones, too. Like, they'll be at home, and the team's just going to pour it on them. And then everybody's going to be like, should Brady retire? And then he's going to have to answer all the questions. I see it, man. I see that shit. I should place a bet right now. Well, dude, the AFC is is stacked. It right is loaded. Now. You know what I'm saying? Like, with the uh... – yeah, they're gonna have to go through some juggernauts as opposed to in the NFC. Who do you have in the NFC? That's really like a killer, you know? Yeah, 
I don't know. I'm surprised about the uh, if. Well, no, no, the Patriots wouldn't. No, the Patriots can maybe play the Steelers or something, right? Because they would be the, the the Ravens would get the bye, and then the Patriots would play probably the lowest seeded team next, right? That's true, dude. I've been writing off the Steelers, but they they, they got said they won like five or six. Just, yeah, it's not the guy that got hit over the head, right? No, no. They as soon as they benched him, man. Have did you see any of the stuff? Uh, like people were making Christmas ornaments. Of like, uh, of <laughs> it was like a, a Browns player with a swinging arm, and the helmet was coming down on a Steelers player. Did you ever? Did you That's see that? Awesome! I didn't see that. There no. was also a a windshield back windshield wiper, who had it had the Steelers guy. No, it had the Browns guy on one side, and he was holding the Steelers helmet. And every time the the wiper went over, it would bang the quarterback in the head. <laughs> it was so great. People are epic, man, with the stuff they think of. Dude, that's funny. Even like the uh, the Cleveland Browns coach, he was caught. He was like going to a movie with his daughters, and he was wearing a shirt that's like that said, "It's the Steelers' fault." Are you serious? Yeah, wow. yeah. And like he got roasted for it. Had to apologize. He's like, "My daughters like made me the shirt." I thought it was funny. Well, like, I I still don't understand how some of these coaches who are in like these amazing positions as being coaches get caught doing like the dumbest shit. Like what? <laughs> you, why are you wearing that out? You know, <laughs> like dude, just wear it around the house. Wear like, it around uh-huh, the house. Or like, funny. yeah, they, sometimes these people do the stu- like James Harrison was like a linebackers coach for the Steelers. And he went out to a bar in Pittsburgh and was just like, we saw it with, um, who was the coach that we spoke about on air that one time? Was it one of the Harborough brothers or something? Oh, like that? it was, uh, yeah, he was like laying down outside yeah. of a bar. Who was just, it? Was it Jim Harbor? It was um, damn no, no, it wasn't. It was a college coach though. Oh, I can't think of him. And he was just looking sloppy. Yeah, he was. He was like smoking uh, smoking weed, just talking to like girls twenty years younger than him. It was actually pretty funny. Yeah, man, I can't believe we're drawing a blank on that one, but whatever. Um, yeah, if you're a coach or something like that, don't get caught doing that stuff. The main thing I wanted to talk about today, which is, you know, I'm surprised we haven't opened up with it, was... Um, oh, oh, oh. Who it was, was it? Uh, Gruden. And so it was Gruden's NFL. brother. Gruden's Redskins. brother. Yeah, yeah, Redskins. Yeah, yeah, Gruden. <laughs> yeah he, uh, uh, he's a bozo. That was just a bozo <laughs> move by him. And uh, I don't even know if he... He got fired, right? Yeah, he's done. Yeah, but I mean, I'm sure John will bring him on to do yeah. something in Las Vegas for that team, that, you know? That's just the last video evidence we have of him. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of coaches that have just fallen off the rails, do you see what Lane Kiffin looks like now? Yo, yeah, he's back, though. He's back at Old Miss. He's back. But they put a picture of him, and it's just like he had like a mullet-looking hair, and his face was like super, super chubby. He's really overweight. Um not that there's anything wrong with that, but I mean, like he was just like a super good looking, fit looking dude when he was yeah. a coach at USC. Um, then went to Florida and sort of fell off the wagon. Uh, he was at Alabama as their offensive coordinator, but he looked like uh, what's her name, Little Miss Piggy or whatever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> dude, he definitely just gets after it hard. Oh, like, there's probably the, stories know. for days of him in Alabama, like going out to the bars and. Oh, yeah, Joey Freshwater. You know about that? No, it's just, know, Joey <laughs> just, Freshwater? Yo, yo, that's Joey Freshwater. So this guy, man, when he was – um, he was uh, – he would go out when he was uh, – I think it was – I'm trying to think of the college that he did. Oh, okay, in uh, Tuscaloosa, so Alabama, yep. right? Uh-huh. And, and Lane would go out to these clubs and bars – like that the college kids are going to and people will go up to him like you know girls like yo aren't you aren't you lane kiffin and he's like no my name's joey I'm like oh joey he's like yeah my name's joey freshwater how are you oh my gosh joey <laughs> freshwater like, like like just every that that's what he did he would just go out as joey freshwater when he wanted to go out it's like and have no like change in his appearance. you can't go out and in the just town like, bro you're lane kiffin he's like i'm not i'm joey freshwater you're the offensive <laughs> coordinator at alabama going out in alabama 
telling people that you're not the offensive coordinator at Alabama. Like, yeah, downtown Tuscaloosa. <laughs> it's like, it, yeah, man, that's just that like describes that guy in a nutshell. It's just he he seems so just out of touch, yeah, out of the care, loop, man. you know, that I mean, he's like invincible. No, one, he's like, wasn't it? I think his father was a coach or something like that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's, um, yeah, I mean, he could do whatever he wants. Like, he, I think his appearance now probably hurts him. I think if he does poorly at Old Miss, they're going to look at him, and he's not going to be like that, like, golden ray of light that he looked like in USC. <laughs> and he's going to get fired right away, and he's not going to really get too many more opportunities. Because he straight looks like he's just having a straight binger every time. Like, Old Miss now? That dude, you think he's going to be freaking game planning for whoever, like Southern Mississippi or something like that? That guy's going to be at the bar till 4 in the morning, plastered. Joey Yo. Freshwater is going to be in full effect at Old Miss. Yo, he is. I don't, yeah, I don't think he really, like, I'm not going to say he doesn't care, but he's probably just like, you know, he could have probably snapped his fingers and got a job. How long has he been out, though, out of football, like a year? Well, like I don't know. I mean, he, well, he, he, he wasn't he coaching like Florida International or somewhere like you know. Yeah, he's at FAU. Yeah. So, to me, he just he just reeks of a guy that like isn't gonna put in, you know, twenty two no. hours a day grinding away. You know, like flying he ain't around. Sleeping at the office. Yeah, this dude's not sleeping at the office. He's not going into every single home and like you know pleading for your kid, like. If I'm a if I'm a father, which I am, and my son, like if I've got a son who's like a top recruit, and Lane Kiffin walks in and he's like, "Oh man, you could fully commit to me being here for all four years. Your son's here. You know, we're gonna give him the best this and that." I'm gonna be like, "You just look like you're bullshitting me." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there's some coaches like Coach O at LSU. That guy walks in and I'm like, I don't even care. He's what the he's real like. one. Yeah. Like I, I, this guy knows what like he's he's about it but uh yeah. yeah lane looks like as soon as he leaves your house he's gonna be like yeah fuck this kid and then like, <laughs> you <laughs> he know does. and then like yeah, he really does you're like hey the door's still open man we could hear everything you're saying he's like oh my bad my bad he he really does look like that you know what's crazy though because i i agree with like everything you're saying mm-hmm. but Ole miss Yo, they showed up at the airport for him, like through a party. They had him holding babies there. Like, I don't get it. So it's just the aura of him, man. Because, I mean, he is brilliant uh, offensively. Like, yeah, he, he's a brilliant offensive mind. I've always been a is fan he? of him. I, I think he is. But I think, I think with what you're talking about, I think that kind of leads him down a path where he's just like, like he probably loved it at FAU. Probably just like had a little house on the water and just, you know, the local Chilling. bar nearby and just girls down there for him. Like, you yeah. know, like small yep. enough school where it's like, there's no media where he can, he can go out to the bar and play golf and like have cigars or do whatever the hell he's probably into. But you're right. It's a catch twenty two. I mean, he's probably a genius offensive coordinator, but you got to reel him in and actually get him to focus on your program. And yeah, when you when you're with Nick Saban, you can't really bullshit too much. But if you're the the top guy at FAU, you could do whatever the hell you want because you could sort of skate by, you know, with just your pure talent. Now. So, cause he with FAU, I don't, I don't know if he coached this year, but I know a couple of years ago that they had um, like a winning record, and it was like the the fourth or fifth time that in school history that they've ever had a winning record. Really? Yeah. So he, I mean, he yeah, can coach. He definitely but, can coach. Know, but down there, it's uh, you're you're not going to recruit a ton of guys when. If Miami, Florida, yeah, Florida you get, State, you, get you know what I mean? Like you're yeah. you're at the bottom end of the totem pole with recruiting, so maybe this will help him out. I do like when he's in my life, though. I think he's funny. Yeah, I think it's yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just funny how these coaches bounce around all these schools and like they learn all the fight songs and they have to put on a different you know like message every single day and it's just like yo here at alabama we're all for this and that and then it's like a year later he's at old miss and he's like old miss fight 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 and you're just like 
You guys are just characters, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's true. They are. And they just bounce around from team to team. And so it's always funny seeing, like I said, a coach, you know, running to the student section after a game, like Herm Edwards or something, going to the student section in Arizona State and pretending to, like, sing along to some song that they've sung for 80 years. Like, he genuinely gives a shit about that, you know? I know. I know. It's hard to believe. It's like... It's more of a business almost than like the NFL, honestly. Like yeah. it's just you just hear these coaches and you're like, oh wow, this is just all BS. Except for like a few guys like Eddie L. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, he no. seems. But I think I've said it before. But like when I think Texas football, I just think of like Mac Brown and when they won the national championship against USC. Yeah. And then when I saw him in like a University of North Carolina like blazer in the locker room, so excited weird. about a win, I was just like. It's just an opposite color. It's a totally different so side weird. of the U.S. Yeah, it was just – that to me was like, this dude's a sellout, man. Like, that's just selling out. Granted, he needs another job. But he needs a job, yeah. It just looked weird. It just just didn't feel right. I know. I know. I go both ways with it. doesn't – it, like, doesn't look right, doesn't feel right. But at the end of the day, those guys, they, they – you want to get paid, then – I can't hate on that too much. I know, and I, I look at it in the in the in the like the real world too. I always <laughs> think about the Verizon guy, who's the can you hear me now? And now oh, he just yeah. pumped over to Sprint, and like it was yeah. nothing. And it's just like you were the Verizon guy, like you, you couldn't have done anything else but Verizon. And now you're just with the complete competitor. Is yeah. is wild to me that seeing that guy do like Sprint stuff now. Yeah, they showed him the checkbook. It's not Horizon but... didn't. He he flipped on them quick. That guy, I don't know how he sleeps at night, man. I don't know how he sleeps at night because <laughs> he's just a fucking sellout. Um, Yo, doesn't he do the same the same shit too? With like a not can you hear me now? But it's like another saying. It's something like that. It's like the same exact thing. It's like can you hear me right now? <laughs> <laughs> he's like what? Well, I can trolling him. He's just trolling him. He's like that'll be I epic. Hope you can hear me. <laughs> yeah, Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck that guy. Yeah, he's yeah, a, that guy, man. Um, but the main thing I wanted to talk about the New York Knicks fired David Fisdale, which I didn't really have a soft spot in my heart for David Fisdale because I was, you know, I was never. I mean, like I was on board, I guess, when they hired him, just because you know I'm, I I try to be behind every decision that our front office makes, even even though that they're just idiotic people. Um, but he, he was fired, um, in just a typical Knicks fashion. He was fired on a Friday after he had coached the practice, after he had given a press conference about the game the next day, then he was fired. Um, front office was in practice. He shook their hands. He slapped hands. He was smiling. And then they fired him after his press conference, just typical Dixie move. Um, it doesn't surprise me, you know, it doesn't anything cuz I I haven't gotten caught up with anything the Knicks have done recently, even the off-season signings of them signing every single power forward in the NBA. I um try to just write it off because I was like that's the dumbest shit ever. But everybody on Twitter, all my Knicks fan friends were like, "Nah, man, just wait. Just wait." <laughs> so it's always something with the Knicks. What were your thoughts when you saw it, you know? I thought it was grimy the way they did that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it you might not care how the fans think or whatever, but I guarantee you, other people in the league that you might want to be part of your organization sees that, and it's like they're doing that to that to him. Like, Fizz is a vet of the game. You know what I mean? Like, that could be anyone. Yeah. So I guarantee guys within the game don't respect that either. So it's like get your shit together have some common sense about it like have some common sense about it yeah um but it's time right it's like the dude coached for a year and a half let's not feel too bad for him i'm not saying you are but like he he's getting like 22 million dollars because he's still got like four years left on his contract yeah so no absolutely not i wish i could get fired from a job and they continue to pay me millions and i don't have to work yeah that sounds amazing yeah um but it was definitely time just because 
there was no progress. Mm -mm. You know, you could lose and lose and lose, and that's fine. You know, because no one had high expectations with the way they assembled the roster, like yep, yep. you know, you said. But to con be so inconsistent on a daily basis, that's not what those young guys need. So get someone else in there, right? You try something else. Yeah. Um, the thing that irritates me a little bit was like so many other coaches in the NBA came out and were just – granted, our front office is, is really, really bad, but like no one was putting any responsibility on Fisdale. And, you know, there were young guys on the team. Um, and like you look at the Bulls, and I, I live in Chicago now, and I've got a lot of friends who are Bulls fans who hate on the coach. I don't even know his name, but the bald dude um, – I can't even think of his name, but they hate on the dude. But I always like say to them, I'm like, hey, look, Zach Levine's having his best season ever. Um, Wendell Carter's having a great season. Co Kobe White is having a great season. They're all like progressing and they're rookies and they're, or, yeah. or Wendell Carter is maybe his second season, but now he's actually becoming a player in the NBA. And I said to them, they actually win games here and there. Like you can go into a game versus the Lakers and maybe think, you might win the game. Like, granted, the end of the game, young players fall apart or, like, you know, you just make bad decisions as a player because you haven't been in that moment. But you you could actually think you're going to beat that team. The Knicks, like, it's still a question mark for every single young player. Kevin Knox is just, like, get, he gets benched. one Like, Fizdale would bench him one, one game and then the next game play him the whole game or something yeah. like that. And then after the game say, like, uh, he's learning this and that. It's a good learning barometer for him. Oh, Seahawks on the board. Defensive touchdown, I think. Okay. Um, Nilakina, same type of deal. It's just like one game he's he's in the doghouse. The next game he's you know making a defensive stop against Luka or something like that. There was no consistency with Fizdale where players were getting better or getting worse. Um, so he should take some of the responsibility too. So a lot of these coaches like Popovich, who I respect, Steve Kerr, were just piling on front office because you know they've always just shitted on the front office. But Fizdale does reserve, he does should take a little bit of um, accountability or responsibility for some of the losses and for his firing. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, when you have guys like Kevin Knox was, you know, people were excited about him last year. Yep. Dennis Smith, when they got Dennis Smith in the trade, and Dennis Smith, with what he did for the Mavericks, like, yeah, it's still, you could say it's not a good trade at the time, but you're like, all right, well, Dennis Smith is an exciting player, and he's, like, kind of disappeared. It's He's nowhere to be found, and Dennis Smith is a great example you bring up because it's like we had anticipated this guy becoming a potential all-star. Yeah. He gets the ball at the three-point line and doesn't even look to shoot. You know, everything is just, like, a crossover attack the basket. Like, yeah, he's another one that is just disappeared. And there's no yeah. – there's as soon as we got him for the Mavericks, it should have been, here's where you left off, now just take off. And it yep. just went all the way back down where it's back at ground zero for him. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know where they go from here. I know you guys will pl have plenty of time to see who you want for next year. I, You know, I doubt you, – you always doubt that the interim – coach sticks around but who knows yeah i know yeah, bronx is a big like, fan of his because he's he was the g league guy but maybe the knicks need a guy that is just like he he got put in the position because of for whatever reasons um maybe he runs like he, he did well for the g league team he couldn't win in the playoffs it, we had the best record and he never won um a championship in the g league but maybe just some random no no name guy is who we need um and not a big name like Larry Brown or, you know, uh, Mike D'Antoni. Someone who's just yeah. a smart basketball mind. I definitely don't think you need those two. But, um, but no, I know what you're saying because when you – and this is any sport. Mm -hmm. When a coach gets fired halfway through the year and the next guy to step up is usually the guy that is most deserving of it but not the sexiest name. Yep. You know, so it's like – it's like, all right, just take over, you know, because we've trusted what you've done. It's usually a guy that's been in the organization for six, seven, maybe ten plus years. We trust you. Who's put we his know, time, yeah. We know it won't get worse. Yep. We don't know if it'll get better, but we know it won't get worse. So these guys, that I mean, you could go back to college football even. That's how Orgeron got his start as interim mm -hmm. because they fired their dude a couple games into the season. 
Yep. You know, so it can work out. So, you know. Yeah, so we'll see. See, it, see what happens. It'll be interesting. And then also on the flip side, knowing who the Knicks are, even if he does a great job, you know, they're still only going to end up with 22 wins or something like that. So it'll yeah. still look like a, like a crappy season. Um, and then just the Knicks being the Knicks, they're going to want to try and bring in a big splash. So like yeah. whether they – I think coaches are going to start looking at the Knicks organization. Like, granted, they're still going to be able to bring in coaches there, but it's just sad. You bring in Phil Jackson to run the organization, D'Antoni and Fisdale and all these top names, and they leave in shambles. They leave disgraced. So, like, anyone who is deciding to take the job now, like, like say you offer it to Becky Hammond, who's, like, with the Spurs. She's got a clean-slated name and, like, highly respected. Would be the first female coach ever. She's got to think – if I leave this in three years, are people going to be looking at me laughing? You know? Yeah. No, it's true. And then is that going to be my only chance at being a head coach in the NBA? Look at Derek Fisher. Gonna wear it? Yeah. And am I going to waste it on the Knicks? Yeah, because Fisher, granted, he did a lot of it to himself. But he did. God, man. If that, if that was all happening in Memphis or in Atlanta or a smaller market – he might be back in there. He might not Definitely. be coaching WNBA, you know? So the Knicks' problem isn't necessarily trying to find the biggest name for head coach. They need big-name players. Yeah. It, so, I'm, you know, I'm fine if you're winning 22 games because you need a draft pick, yeah. like, in the worst way. You but need – you need 10 draft picks, honestly. There's such you, a laughing stock that even articles came out now and – it's just like after the firing and it's like the Knicks are still looking to trade for, you know, pieces to the team. And I'm just like, who would want to get traded to the Knicks right now? That's when you're just like fucking Dolan, man. Like it's, it's he's got to just be saying stuff out of his ass like that. Cause you're not looking for pieces. What are you looking for pieces for, for next year, two for, years from now? And that and a piece the, of what? Like, and all, all the articles come out that they're fascinated by uh, the Toronto guy, the GM, Massa Yuri or whatever. But yeah. this guy's got to be like, I'm Can't coming to the Knicks if you give me two hundred million dollars. Like, there's no shot yeah. that this guy wants to come and be the GM of the Knicks when he's yeah. got a good thing going in Toronto right now. Yeah, he's doing fine with where he's at. That's gonna be a tough pull. Like people, I mean, it can happen just because it's New York and you have the checkbook for it. But yeah. That's the only that's the only way he would come. And that and the next thing I want to ask you is the media writes these storylines that almost just is like it's almost like with the Yankees, Garrett Cole is like a, a done deal already. But if I'm the Yankees management, the media is just writing like the Yankees are gonna have to pay so much money. Like they sort of open up the checkbook for the Yankees before the guy even comes, because this guy must be reading articles like, Oh, they're gonna pay me. Two hundred seventy million dollars, you know, or like this crazy amount, because the media is just putting all this stuff out there. Where once it starts snowballing, it's over. You've got no control over it. Yeah, and then it's are you bidding against yourself at that point? Exactly. You know, which it, <laughs> that can happen. I don't, I don't know how that works. Like, because it's tough when if you're throwing an offer out there, like a crazy offer at a guy, and there's nothing on any other side. Nope. Like, well, why'd you do that? <laughs> yep. Yep. The Knicks did it with Joe Kim Noah. The Yankees. Yeah. I think the Yankees have been okay. I mean, I wouldn't be even mad if yeah, they overpaid for that. this guy because he just seems like a stud. But um your team, the Mets, I wanted to ask you about because uh the like the off season signings I guess are starting with winter meetings or whatever. And uh the Mets I think it was Zach Wheeler went to the Phillies for like a hundred million dollars or something like that. And before we got on air, I said, I think the Mets are the only team that every time a star player of theirs comes up, I think they did it with, uh, who was Daniel Murphy. Yeah. Um, hurt. Wheeler, but the end, they always end up going to like someone in your rival, rather, whether it's like the nationals, um, Jose Reyes went to the Marlins years back. Yep. It's, uh, every other team, is sort of just like strategical of like, hey, if you leave us, can you maybe just go to like, like the Colorado. Cardinal? Yeah, well, yeah, go to <laughs> San Diego, like just somewhere off the beaten path. The Mets are the only team that will let their top players go to someone in their division that they got to face freaking 400 times in a season. And that's my only issue 
really with letting him go because I was fine with letting him go for they overpaid him, yeah. but that's fine. You know, like guys get overpaid now and it's normal. Yeah. So, but now we're going to have to see him five times in a season, yeah. three, four times, you know, maybe one time in the playoffs. Like, and that's never <laughs> historically gone the Mets way. No. Nope. So was he, was he the, our best pitcher? Not at all. Was he good, reliable, you know, had great stuff? Yeah. But, you know, uh, for that price, I was like, yeah, yeah it's a lot of money. Walk. I just wish he went to like the White Sox yeah. who offered him, you know, that's like, what, yeah, people in Chicago easier. said that he didn't want to, he didn't, he wanted to stay in New Jersey or something like that close to home. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw a funny, uh, I think it was a tweet. It was just like, it showed everybody in the division. It was like Marlon signed this guy, Philly signed this guy, national signed this guy. And here's the Mets. And it was like Mr. Met was doing like the Dougie or something like that. Yeah. It was like some tweet. And it was like, here's what the Mets are doing this offseason. <laughs> Yo, people love shitting on them. And granted, oh. most of the time it's deserved. But it's just like, it's it's easy. It's just easy to, to shit on them. I, I don't think they're doing anything wrong at the moment. It's yeah. kind of, they got to wait to see some other pieces you know what i mean like no other starting pitcher i thought it was weird that wheeler even went that early because garrett cole's at the top exactly so so, see, exactly yeah you see what they're paying at the top and then it all trickles down so there's still a lot of guys that need to be signed it all happened real quick right around christmas time and then you can start to make a judgment on what we're doing or not doing. Yeah, and aren't the Mets going like isn't aren't, isn't there something going on with ownership where they're selling and there's all this controversy yeah. stuff? I, dude, honestly, that and that made that day the best day because Wheeler signed it, and then that same day we're having an ownership change most likely. Is so, that a good thing for Mets fans? Oh my god, the yeah. Will Ponds, right? So we're in the, the Will Ponds are awful, man. Yeah. They're awful. So they're cheap as hell. You could. They're very comparable to James Dolan. Really, they're very yeah. Like because he, uh, the Wilpons love control. They love okay. being part of like a you know the dugout, Ugh. like the atmosphere of the players. It's got to be the, so awkward too to like have like some Dominican smooth dude and then have like Fred Wilpon like yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it was awesome. Something came out where uh, one of our catchers from like 2006, Paul Laduca, was talking on a radio show. And he was like, they asked him, and he's like, I love Fred. He's like, Jeff, Jeff, I could do without. <laughs> and Jeff is Jeff is the son. And he's like, and they're like, why? And he told a story. He's like, so you have all your game day shit in your locker room. And he's like, I have five pairs, six pairs of game day Oakleys. Like, don't touch my game day shit. Yeah. Jeff Jeff walks up to him. Grabs his Oakleys, puts them on, tries them on. He's like, I really like these, man. I think I want these. And and Laduca was like, Yo, put those back. And he was like, Nah, nah. I, I like I. These are mine now. Oh and he's my like, gosh. And he's like, I I know you're trying to be boys with me, but this is really weird. Like, don't touch my game stuff. Put it back. And he's like, It just got like we never had like any relationship after that, just because that's what. Dolan is like probably you know you're trying to be someone that you're not to these people yep. and it's like it doesn't work yeah and that's why when I listened to the podcast with uh Bob Myers and Draymond Green and it was like a Golden State Warriors themed podcast they built up that chemistry where even Bob Myers was think like talking to a point where it was just like I know my boundaries where like the players are the players and they're in that locker room and they've got some type of bond where like if I do go in there it's it's for a purpose or like because I've built up this, you know, this trust with them where I can go in there. Like, yeah. you know, you're my boy. I could say something to you that maybe someone else can't say where if they said it, you'd be like, hey, who the fuck are you? Like, yeah, maybe you know me from college or something like that. But like you didn't build up that trust to say that to me or like, right. You haven't put in the hours with me, uh, Will Pond, to put on my glasses. Like, you don't. you should know that these are my five glasses that nobody touches, you know? And yeah, it, and he that's... was like, yeah, you know, trying to be like cool and friends with the guy. And it's, no, man, like, come that, on. That like, what are you doing? Like, vibe, we got yeah. an hour till game time. I'm trying to, like, Lock in. figure out what we're throwing here. And no, so it's good that they're they're going to be out. We have a guy now that is 
going to be individually the richest owner in MLB right away. Oh, for real? Like that single as an individual, uh-huh. the richest guy. I mean, he bought up they, – because they lo- people love shit on the Mets too. So, like, they come out with all these tweets, you know. And they found out this dude spent, like, 150, 150 mil – on a piece of art that like it's just like this shitty piece of art was it that banana just, that banana taped to the wall oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i just watched that i don't i don't know what to think there's a guy I, who I, fucking I ate the like, banana yeah i don't even know how like it was taped to the wall how did they even t- how did they take it away like i know the guy ate the banana now someone yeah, he like ate it. but like yeah, I don't, I don't even get me started on the fucking know. banana on the wall thing. I, art, I, man. That's art. <laughs> but so he spent like 150 mil on this piece of art. It's like a stick figure. Oh. And that's more than any uh, individual contract from a Mets player. Are you serious? So it's like, yo, he's going to open up the bank for a real <laughs> human, man. <laughs> yeah. You would think. You would hope. Yeah. Yeah. But he's probably oh. the secret buyer behind that fucking banana or something like that. But meanwhile, yeah. if you got a shot at like Mike Trout, he'll be like, "Eh, let's look at let's look at the pros and cons." Yeah. <laughs> You're like, "You just paid 150 mil for a stick figure. I don't want to look at any fucking anything. Just yeah, open can up we the checkbook." Can sell that? Yeah. Um Yeah, so Carlos Beltran's the manager, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean the Mets will be all right, I think. I think be he, all right. you know, with him, the new owner, um they're always competitive. They've got young guys in their farm system Man. that are always good. Um, Eldon Yeekel asked, again, another good question. He compared, is it fair to compare Michael Vick to uh, Lamar Jackson? I'll let you answer first. <laughs> I would say, yeah, just based on, like, on Vick's individual achievements. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like, he's he achieved a lot individually. They're similar um, players, yeah. But there, that's nothing that Lamar can't do, or like Lamar will be the MVP this year. So there yep. you go. There's there. That's an individual achievement, and I think, like obviously, has a huge chance to surpass him in terms of team accomplishments because Vic never really led him in anything. So it doesn't help that he went away for a few years in his prime. But yeah. Again, that's that's on him. Yeah, and Vic is uh, recently come out and said, I feel like he's been in a lot of TV interviews, and he's sort of. Like throwing his teammates under the bus, saying like, you know, like, oh, if I had the weapons that he had and I had the receivers that he had, but I think Lamar is like a team guy, and like, it's it's not like he's got like exceptional weapons at wide receiver and tight end and all this stuff. It's just they're such a good team, and he's that good of a leader. Um, he makes them all better. Whereas Mike Vick had probably just as good of guys, and like, they're all in the NFL. If you're that good of a quarterback, that good of a leader. You could turn those guys, and you could have had the same success that uh, Lamar is having right now. But we're also yeah. creatures of the moment too. Where like v- Vic had great seasons, also, you know, Lamar he had unbelievable seasons. Yeah, like Lamar hasn't really done anything yet. It's just like we're we're in the midst of him having an amazing season that you know we want to be quick to turn to Michael Vic and be like, he's doing a lot better than you. Where I would say right now. Vic is more successful NFL player because he's put in more years and, you know, he's had more success than Lamar has had in just this one season. Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously when their careers are done, we'll see if Lamar has any Super Bowls and more MVPs. But right now, yeah, I think it's fair to compare them because, you know, Vic could sling the ball just with the best of them and he was accurate and he was fast as shit, you know, like just like Lamar. So I, I think there are similar players. So it's uh, it's a fair comparison. Um but I would go out on a limb and say that, you know, Lamar is, in my eyes, he looks like a better leader with all the stuff you see yeah. from Twitter and Instagram now. The way he, if he fumbles, he'll go apologize to every player. And, you know, he takes, you know, he, he's accountable for everything that he does, you know, bad on the field. Um, so that's what I like about Lamar a little better than maybe what I saw at Vic. But I also don't remember every single game with him. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's uh the things that we've seen with Lamar in terms of him being a good teammate, it's impressive. Like yeah. he, he gets it. Um, but he watching him play is very similar to Vic. Cause it's like, it looks like Madden. Yeah. So it's, that, it's that right there, like obviously you want to see the longevity in Lamar's career 
to talk about this comparison, but when you just see like, I just remember watching Vic, you know, and it looked like a video game and same with Lamar. Yeah. I was like surprised. I mean, I was surprised by how good the Bills defense was because there was, I was watching that game today. It was on TV. And when you see, like, I feel like when I remember, I don't even remember it happening too often, but like if Vic got sacked or Lamar got sacked, it's almost just like, holy shit. Like, yeah. How did they, like they got him. yeah, how'd they get him? And I saw multiple times today with the Bills defense who, who I've been told by media um, are really good, but they looked really good because they kept getting to him. They put a lot of pressure on him. The yeah, Bills, the Bills, the Bills are, are the real man. deal. After I will finally say that with full conviction, yeah. they're the real deal after today. The way they put the pressure on, like, yeah, they lost, but, man, they could hang. They could hang with anyone. Yeah. And that defense is top three in the league. Definitely. Definitely. The way that they were getting to Lamar and sacking him and um, competing with the Ravens, was they're going to be a tough out in the playoffs, the Bills, because they're, they're – <sighs> Anybody who just has to play home games in Buffalo, like you, you already get like <laughs> some uh, some some street cred for me because it's like you got to live in Buffalo, you got to play in Buffalo, and that shit sort of sucks. Yeah, it does. No shade to Buffalo. No, no it does. <laughs> Buffalo sucks. No shade to Buffalo. <laughs> the wings are good. Um, but one more point on Vic. He was announced as like some Pro Bowl honorary captain thing, and uh, he's taken a lot of blowback from like the cancel culture saying that he shouldn't be the honorary captain. I'll open up by just saying, I think he's paid his dues and he's paid his debt to society. Um, he's, you know, he's out there and I think he does stuff, you know, with the humane society and pro dog stuff. So it's like, let the, like, let's move on. Let the guy be the honorary captain of the pro bowl. He's still likable by other people who aren't still, you know, holding him against whatever he did with the dogs. So let, let's just – hopefully that just blows over and they don't, you know, remove him as the coach because that would be pretty upsetting. I think that would be trash. It would I be think terrible. they should put their foot down and tell these people, who are whoever it is that are complaining, probably not fans of the game nope. anyway. Yeah. So it's like tell them to the fuck off. Like, yeah. Go do your own thing. Go, go protest the next thing. You know, go do whatever. But, you know, you – yeah, the guy committed something really, really awful, like yeah. a horrible, horrible crime, right? But again, he paid his dues. Let him do this. It's always it's, so it's funny. Fine. Like let him, like let him. You can't just. And we've talked about this before. You can't just cancel someone's life and career. You know what I mean? Because you never know what this leads to down the road. Like yep. if he's trying to be seen a little bit and if he wants to get into the game. and But we accepted him to come to back media. as a quarterback. Like we accepted right. him and, and everybody was cool with it because he wasn't a star quarterback anymore and he wasn't getting the limelight. Yeah. You can't pick and choose when you're going to be mad at a guy, you know? I agree. Yeah, yeah. No, and, you can't. It's one mistake and it's done with. And you make so. a good point where it's just like a lot of the times it's these people who don't watch sports at all. That all of a sudden, when they see one thing, they want to come out and they want to charge and they want to go crazy about it. Um, where they don't know the full story, they don't know the whole scope of like what maybe he's been doing, uh, he, how he's he's been on NBC for Sunday night games and he's spoken in this and that. Like he's been around the game a little bit more. Where they yeah. think he's just like, oh, they're just putting this, they're propping this guy back up at the Pro Bowl. Or it's like, no, 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 no. He's been back around. You know, it's been a slow build. Yeah, yeah it's been a slow build, but it's just like. You can't not watch and then all of a sudden see one thing and then hop on there and say you're an expert about it, you know? They did the yeah. same thing. I saw, like, the Georgia Bulldog or something was, like, in – he. I guess he's on the sideline of the Georgia games. And um, he was, like, in this little house thing, and it was, like, pouring rain, and he was, like, in the back of, like, the thing. And they were, like, this is so animal cruelty to, like, the Bulldog being in – I was, like, he's covered – sideline at a game when all these fans are there and like the pouring rain like yeah just stop picking a fight for no reason like the dog's fine i'm sure he got fed a beautiful steak right after this game like looks a better life than all of us a better life. like it looked like the the dog house was heated and stuff like that but That's there what was I'm like saying. yeah because i understand when people say that because i have i take a serious offense to 
what if I go to a Mets home game, there's mm-hmm. this dog that sits out there with a pipe in yeah, his yeah, mouth. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. It's like take if and you take a picture, like, leave hey, some if money. If you take a picture, give some money. And this dog is just you see the area, there's no shade or anything. <laughs> I have an issue with that. Like it, it just got this dog sitting in the sun. I think I've seen the dog. It does look miserable. With that dumbass dude, yeah, he puts glasses yes, on him, yeah, dresses yeah. him up, and then this dumbass dude is just sitting there, like not even paying attention, like just trying to, like, dude, that pisses me off. I never, yeah, never mess with that. Yeah, like, I've seen no. that one. It's like, yeah, if you take an Instagram picture or leave some money, or, and and you probably get tourists and like just drunk girls and drunk guys taking pictures that thing with is it. filled up but it's like dude that dog is there for all 81 games i know it's crazy like that's not cool yeah you're right like it, yeah, like like do your homework humane society and like go after that guy but no one's yeah. gonna care because it's not on national tv you can't see the dog in the back of the end zone or something like that and that's my issue is like that guy's been out there for years with that dog and you don't see any tweets or you don't see any, you know, uproar about that, but you go after the shit. Um, you know, you go after Mike Vick being chosen as the pro bowl coach when he's paid his debt, you know, when there's probably other fish to fry. It's more newsworthy. It's more newsworthy than a dog in Queens. Exactly. And flush in Queens. Exactly. That's it. So yeah, pick like go after everybody. All right. Done with that guy. Um, Quickly, there was the rematch. Uh, Ruiz, I think it was Carlos Ruiz. Is it Carlos Ruiz? Andy. Andy Ruiz. Carlos. <laughs> yeah, Carlos Ruiz is like a comedian or some shit, maybe? It was or no, Carlos, Carlos Ruiz was a baseball it was player, Carlos right? Carlos Mencia. Carlos versus, Mencia. Uh... <laughs> no, but it Carlos George... Ruiz is a baseball player, right? It was George Lopez. <laughs> George Lopez versus Carlos Mencia would actually make a really great fight. Yeah, that would be a good celebrity boxing match. That would be match. a really good celebrity boxing match. Um, So Andy Ruiz versus... Something Joshua. Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua. And um, Joshua looked like he didn't get a haircut for the fight, and he looked like, <laughs> oh, yeah, like you're in prime time, dude. You're getting paid a lot of money. Just get a fresh tape up or something like that. He looked mad crusty. Hey, he went back to his roots, man. I guess so. Maybe that, <laughs> yeah, that could have been a sign like I'm focused on the fight. I don't care about my haircut, this and that. Yeah. His biceps look great, but he sort of looked like a little chubby in his abdomen area. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna um, say otherwise. Maybe a little softer. Yeah, I know he did less strength and conditioning and more just straight like actual boxing work. So oh, that did can he? soften you up. Like if oh. you're just if he put the weights down more, which he did. Yeah. The the best part about this is Andy Ruiz was like. He weighed in like 15 pounds heavier than the first fight. And then at the end of the fight, he's like, yeah, I I ate too much. I was overweight for oh, this. come on, man. He's like, bro. He was just go, collecting the check. Go, leave. Was it? It was like in Saudi Arabia or something, right? Yeah, which is weird because. The money grab, both, man. That has nothing to do with. Nothing. Either man. of them. That was just a, probably a huge money grab. And then I saw an article like the day after. It was just like, is. uh. Anthony Joshua, the best heavyweight. And I was like, what? Yeah. I was like, the guy lost to him. And, like, you still got, what's his name out there? The the knockout guy. Wilder, yeah. Wilder. And Fury's still out there. Like, I, the guy Joshua seems like just like a minor league baseball player to me. He's like, stay in the minors while the big boys like Fury and Wilder finish their fight. And then you can hop on board and maybe get a match with one of them. Joshua's so good technically, but they keep hiding him from these other guys really? so it does make yeah it makes you wonder like dude they he should have fought wilder probably like last year i think this, as, you know I, what i mean boxing I, always does that oh yeah of course but as technically sound as that guy is i think he like he looks soft you know and i wouldn't say that to his face but like one <laughs> punch from wilder to that dude and i think it would just be a wrap like it that yeah. dude would get knocked the fuck out because like wilder is straight like I don't know where he's from, but like he's a straight Alabama. like yeah, like Alabama gritty cat was like a yeah. truck driver, and yep. like Joshua is like from the UK. He speaks all like proper and shit. Probably it's like Wilder lays one punch on you, dude, and like you're, it's a wrap. Like it's and that's probably why they they hit him from him. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, and Ruiz, he got a taste of that money and pro. Yeah. Was, 
he got comfortable. He got comfortable. Yeah, which I I don't see how more of these guys don't do that though. You know what I mean? Like Anthony Joshua has made so much money in his career. Yeah, because he's huge over there. Yeah, it's like. But he he also looks like he cares about his fitness a little bit too. Whereas like the money, yeah, wouldn't really affect his like workout regimen. Like it would right, just be right. like cars, and if he blew it like on whatever I don't know drugs or partying. Whereas, oh, uh, Ruiz looked like he was fat the first fight. Where now you give a whole bunch of money, and he's got the means to get you know three steaks instead of one steak. Yo, I thought I think he went from like 268 to 283. That's what I'm saying, Just man. Just a big chunk, man. And then at the end, the best quote ever. It's like, yeah, bro. No shit. Yeah. They, oh, oh, you came in overweight, you think? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, good for him. He's probably happy. He probably made a boatload of money that he like made money, man. And he he'll if he doesn't get a a a, a three-peat with him, He'll still get some other cards because he yeah. did have the belt for a hot second, you know. And he's Mexican too, and Mexicans their they, their fans are the best in terms of yeah. like combat sports, man. They like ride or true. die with them, so he will sell a little bit. Um, it's just crazy they have it in Saudi Saudi Arabia. <laughs> they had to build a stadium for it. it does, yeah, they probably yeah, that was probably a drop in the bucket for them, man. Saudi Arabia. The, the amount of money that's over there is ridiculous. Just oil money. But the dude, like, the, like, oh, we don't have a stadium for this fight, but we got the fight. <laughs> Let's start building. <laughs> Some of the stories you hear, like, you hear about, like, J-Lo going over to Saudi Arabia for, like, these private concerts and just getting paid, a... like, a dick ton of money. Like, $150 uh, million just for, like, one performance for some Saudi king. And there's plenty of artists that do that. That wouldn't scare you, say, if you were like a pop singer. Um, yeah, it would scare me, but it would also like to go over there and be like, "Hey, this this king." <laughs> I'd also be less scared when they told me how much money I'd be getting. Like, if they wanted to do a sports buffet in Saudi Arabia because some weird prince over there was a fan of it, <laughs> we'd be on the first flight there. Believe me, I would. I I'd would say, convince I'd you. Take my chances sick. with that. Actually, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So hopefully, if there's any Saudi princes out there or something that are fans of sports buffet. Let us know. Yo, I'll take a quick helpful. twenty mil to do it. To do it, maybe Elden Yiko. Maybe Elden Yiko is a Elden Yiko. Do you have any ties to the Saudi government or anything? Because uh, we'll uh, we'll gladly come over there and do a show oh, in your man. living room for you. You, you just got to build out a, a nice little studio for us. Live Q and A. Live Q and A. Whatever you want, as many questions as you want, Elden. No, we appreciate those questions, man. For real, so they're um, good. They are really good questions. Like really good questions. So keep those coming, man. We appreciate uh, your support. We appreciate the questions. We'll try to get to them um, as we continue forward. And if other people have questions, put them in the comments. Let us know your thoughts uh, and keep them coming. Uh, anything else you got to add, Matt? No, I think that's it. No, okay. it's a really short one, right? Or no? Uh, let's see how long we went. I got the, oh, it was an hour, 58 minutes. Right. We, we always try to shorten it up, but. We end up talking about princes and Saudi, just random stuff. Anybody who knows anyone from Saudi Arabia, if you got a friend, tell a friend in Saudi Arabia because uh, we're we're there. We're on the next flight. I'm down. I'm down. All right, cool. Um, that's Sports Buffet. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Uh, like I said, ask us questions. Uh, tell us your thoughts on things. And if not, we'll just keep chugging along. Peace out.